Did you know that um, it was going to become successful? Did you ever see it becoming what it is today? I, uh, I, can't, I can't say I did. I can't say I did. What I always knew and felt in my heart, that if other people got to see this, because hip-hop was just a, the people you knew. Mm. I mean, you could, like, you knew everybody that did this, mm. just about. And that's I am talking about. Right now, I try to know everybody that do hip-hop. Right. That shit is impossible. Yeah. Right? <laughs> started, you can name, oh, DJ so-and-so, that's this the crew, that's that crew, that's this, this, that. You know, after after it kind of lit, it was like wildfire. It was out of control. But at one time, you knew everybody that was doing hip-hop. All right? It was like a, a community somewhat. So at some point, how did it go commercial to where, you know, the investors invested in it? and you know took it out of the community the brothers that was in the community hands i think a few things were, were like validation stamps for hip-hop um at different points um 79 uh was the first attempt at recording hip-hop for public consumption um in a in in, in, a, in a record way uh prior to that um tapes cassette tapes were the records you know, for hip hop artists, for cats that did hip hop and, and shows. So we would record our shows and you sell the tapes manually. Like there wasn't in stores and shit, but you know, we would sell tapes. And then in 79, like a slew of record companies popped up trying to capitalize on this music that it seemed like, yo, this shit might be around for a while. It might start to jump. And that's only independent labels, no majors. All right, until Curtis is deal. So in 79, I think that was the first example or, or um, indication that this is official. This is going to be official, and it's going to uh, grow from here. Uh, and and so, then, of course, Wild Style, the movie Wild Style, when they approached us to do Wild Style, that was a big uh, stamp of approval or set of validation for what we were doing. Beat because Street. prior to that, you see, people seeing you doing something hip hop related, it wasn't a positive kind of, you know what I mean? People seeing you, shh, 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 uh, motherfuckers fucking up people, spraying on walls and, and, and vandalizing property. So graffiti wasn't, oh, look at the great graffiti. No, hell no. Breaking. If you was breaking, which we, we, we dance in the street a lot of time. You see right on the sidewalk, somebody beating on the car, they could break it. People walking by like, what the fuck is wrong with them? Why why, why, why you doing that dumb shit? Why are you spit, scuffing up your sneakers and fucking up your clothes dancing around on the floor? Right. That I was their attitude. We, we, we playing music, we DJing. Yo, why are you fucking up the needles? How you gonna shit? Don't be scratching up my records. And this and that, we on the mic, we rapping. That ain't singing, that's bullshit. Y'all just talking, y'all ain't doing nothing. And now look today, all them things that they said was bullshit is a multi-billion, a fucking trillion dollar industry. Yeah. Okay, so there were different cues or points at different places which you saying like, yep, watch, uh-huh, they like this shit, uh-huh, uh-huh. And then after the, the rec after Rapper's Delight dropped in 79, it was the first hit that exposed this whole shit to the rest of the country, the fire was lit, the fuse was lit. The fuse was lit. I mean, you know, that led to a major record deal. That, that you know, was the, the validity that this shit could sell. And so that's what Kirk got signed, you know what I mean? And his shit went gold, and it was like, oh, it can go gold, this music could sell. <laughs> and it was on and popping. He was the first uh, rapper to go go. Yeah, yeah. Curtis Blow. Curtis Blow. Yeah. You know, um, everything you just said. You know what that sounded like? It sounded like my mom. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> she was one of those people back then. You know, she didn't under. She was coming from Luther Vandross and Patti LaBelle, and she didn't understand the culture of music and. You know, she didn't, that was exactly what it was. She you lucky that scratch. all she did was not understand. My mom's. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to ask you about. <laughs> yo, we in the house break dancing and shit. And you know, you got the wood floors in the apartments yeah. and shit. This is when I lived on Creston Avenue. 
And me and my boys, we in there, it was just spin, where you just keep spinning, 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 and then you go to sleep. <laughs> I remember that. And we was trying to do that shit. And, and, and I went, I got up, like I went out the room to go to the bathroom. And my mom's standing in the hallway with a 32. She said, if y'all don't get the fuck out <laughs> with that bullshit, I will kill you and all the rest of y'all before I let y'all kill me. <laughs> now, I wasn't, you know, I know my mother wasn't going to shoot me or nothing, but mm -hmm. she, she was holding that shit like she was dead serious. So, she was I mean, serious. And, 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 and my mother was older. I was adopted, so my mother was much older. She was grandma age, but she one of them old Southern people. Right. Yeah, you know I mean that raised me. Like you gonna take that bullshit outside? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that like it was it was it wasn't kumbaya. A lot of people want to claim like yeah, it's your culture, peace, love, happiness. This. Man, get the fuck out of here, man. Niggas was like, yo, you over there. Them niggas is over there. Fuck them niggas over here. These niggas ain't shit. They whack. We good. We the best. We, you know, it was all that. It was all that. It wasn't later, you know, maybe a couple of people was cool. Like uh, Cold Crush was cool with the Church of Three and the Fearless Four, you know what I mean? But there was groups that were just shit on everybody. Man, fuck y'all ain't, y'all ain't this and that. And now... Once our generation was passed, and there was a new set of niggas out there, okay? I don't care if you made records, you was hot a little bit or whatever, this and this and that. Now, we all fucked up together. Now we all back in the same boat because it's enough, some other people, you know, ahead. And now niggas is like, yeah, man, yeah, we, yo, now we, now we, now it's us. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all niggas ate. A lot of y'all niggas ate right. and was shitting on niggas, man. So uh, I just wanted to throw that shit in there because I know people's perception of especially the old school of hip hop, like we all united now because we all have a common bond that we started this shit together. But when we was started it together, everybody wasn't all, you know, cool and shit. Did I'm glad we are now mm -hmm. because uh, if hip hop did anything, hip hop brought people together. And even if it wasn't like, okay, you my hip hop brother, it's like, you had to prove yourself to these niggas. You understand what I'm saying? And you hold a certain status, it's like, it ain't about I like you, it's about respect. I gotta respect what the fuck you do. I gotta respect who the fuck you are. I gotta respect that everybody fucking else respect you.